Hi everyone, my name is James Clark and I've been working remotely at NETL Pittsburgh this summer with my mentor, Dr. Nicholas Seifert. Um, today, I will be presenting on my research in membrane desalination where I modeled a novel osmotically assisted brine treatment process using OLI system software. And before I begin, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. I'm a rising senior studying chemical engineering at Johns Hopkins with minors in applied math and environmental studies. And then in my free time, I like to play ultimate frisbee both at Hopkins and in my hometown of Philadelphia. Great. So I first wanna put wastewater treatment into context for you. As you can see here, there are many possible inputs for wastewater treatment that are key areas of focus for NETL and the DOE. And this brings us to the possible solutions. Geologic storage or injection involves partial treatment and then the pumping of wastewater into a disposal well, which is a common option for oil and gas related waste. Um, However, the main options for bulk complete treatment uh, are thermal distillation and, as you can see on the right, membrane desalination. Complete treatment is difficult, but it's important to reach the ideal zero liquid discharge where the entire waste stream can be recycled to pure water and chemical products we can use. So now I want to define a few terms I'll be using often. On the left, we have osmotic pressure, which is a property of an aqueous solution that quantifies its tendency to flow from high to low concentration using pressure units. And it's given by the symbol pi, and it's important to know that it's a function of the concentration of salt. And then on the right, we have reverse osmosis, which is a separations process where water is forced to flow against the concentration gradient using applied pressure, thus separating the solvent from solute. And it's, um, we have an equation, a governing equation below um, that shows um, at JH2O, the amount of product water increases as we apply more hydraulic pressure, delta P, and decreases as we have more salt and thus uh, delta pi. Um, and as you might be able to tell from those definitions, um, delta P is the driving force and delta pi uh, determines how difficult the process will be. And so now that we've discussed a little bit of context, uh, here we have a graphic of a single stage of reverse osmosis. RO is often used to treat seawater and it's optimized to do so. However, the sources of wastewater I've mentioned are many more times concentrated than, than seawater. So since RO pressures are limited by the um, membrane strength, the osmotic pressure would be too high here if we were to try RO in those waste streams. So we would either get no product or a broken membrane actually. Um, currently these high salinity brines are treated using evaporative processes, but RO um, processes are significantly more efficient because they avoid the energy intensive phase change associated with distillation. And this is where my topic of research comes in, osmotically assisted reverse osmosis, or OARO. My mentor, Dr. Nicholas Seifert, worked with Timothy Bartholomew to develop and optimize this modified RO process. And at its core, it's very similar to conventional RO, but there's this uh, saline sweep solution on the permeate side of the membrane that lowers the delta pi, as you can see, which allows current membranes to separate high salinity brines. So in effect, OARO is assisted by osmotic pressure relative to RO, hence its name. Um, but actual membrane separation processes are much more complicated than what's shown here because they have many stages. So now I wanna show you how the stages from the slide before fit into a process. Here I have a process flow diagram of one of the OARO optimization cases I modeled. This is the case one optimization where a 75 gram per liter NACL brine is fed in here with an osmotic pressure of about 60 bar. And it's dewatered using um, two OARO stages. I hope you can see my mouse here and here, and one RO stage here uh, using pressures acceptable to current membranes. And it produces a 99% pure water stream here and a concentrated waste stream with an osmotic pressure of about 130 bar. And if we were to use conventional RO for this instead, we would require a driving force of nearly 200 bar, which is both energetically and physically undesirable. Currently available RO membranes can only take about 85 bar of applied pressure. And there is significant and promising research in the field of improving membrane strength in the future, but my focus this summer was on modeling multi-stage RO with the membranes we have currently. And now that you're familiar with the case one OARO process, I want to show you my work. My project for the summer was to model three um, OARO cases in the software called OLI Flowsheet, a process flow modeling tool. And in front of you is my simplest model in Flowsheet, the only one that could really fit on the screen actually. Um, this is the case one that I showed you on the previous slide with the 75 gram per liter feed and three stages here, here, and here. OLI Flowsheet is great because it does the mass and energy balances for you in an intuitive user interface. Uh, but to get to the point where I made these models, I first had to learn the software. And then I had to understand the OIO process by hand to check my work. And uh, here are the other two cases I modeled, hello. 
the, um, so the initial purpose of my modeling was to check the mass and energy balances of an OARO optimization paper from 2018 with three cases. The mass balances and concentrations clearly checked out within the program, but uh, here are my results of the flow sheet analysis of power consumption with data on the left acquired from my model. Um, and then on the right, we have a graphic directly from the optimization paper I used to construct my model. And as you can see in the red highlighted boxes, the energy consumption uh, per unit product water closely matches those uh, reported in the optimization paper, which confirms the energy balances used to calculate them, which is exciting to see. But not everything went so smoothly. During my modeling process, I noticed a large disparity in osmotic pressure at the high salinity levels used in OARO, with the osmotic pressure given by OLI flow sheet and OLI studio here um, by a common equation uh, used in the optimization process here uh, being the furthest outlying values. So something was wrong. <clears throat> It was important to solve this issue because osmotic pressure is one of the most important parameters for membrane separation processes. My mentor and I found experimental data that um, seemed to agree on a middle value shown in green here, which told us where the osmotic pressure should have been. And we contacted OLI systems to point out this error and sent them our data. OLI responded that they would change their method of determining VW here or the um, partial molar volume of water in their next version. Um, and they sent us some preliminary data, which I used to plot. And as you can see, they line up. Um, and after some digging, I realized that equation two was incorrect as well, because it had an inaccurate assumption that molality equals molarity in converting from molality to gram per liter concentration. So I changed equation two to be a more accurate conversion. And um, I replotted the, the data set. And it matched for higher salinities, which was exciting. Um, it really was a relief when everything finally lined up. I remember that day. Uh, to put this osmotic pressure work into context, I want to show you how the water flux numbers for a single OARO stage would change with our updated osmotic pressures. And this is a schematic version of the case one flow sheet model I showed you earlier. And so you might be familiar with it. Um, we will be focusing on the first stage, which is highlighted in red, which is an OARO stage with the 75 gram per liter feed. And here's the data um, that resulted. And the rows represent the two methods of calculating osmotic pressure that we're comparing. And the columns represent the metrics the osmotic pressure had an effect on. So as you can see, the osmotic pressure affects the driving force, which affects the water flux using the equation below, which we talked about earlier. And to see the effect more clearly, I uh, compared the uh, values of water flux in column three. Um, and as you can see, the commonly made molality equals molarity assumption led to an underestimation of osmotic pressure, um, which led to an overestimation of flux, which, and if you turn to the last column, this requires a additional membrane area to get the expected flux. And to put this into perspective, uh, membranes make up about 50% of the building cost of a separation system such as OARO. So a 4% increase in makeup area seen here actually leads to a 2% um, increase in system cost. But it's important to note that um, the optimization process I was checking assumed an error of 50% in the membrane cost. So a 4% difference is entirely insignificant. Um, the results of the 2018 man manuscript are by all means still valid. It was just interesting to see this summer how many wrong ways there are out there to calculate osmotic pressure at high salinities. And to summarize, my modeling at OLI flow sheet was successful in validating the mass and energy balances using the optimization, and it led me to find a discrepancy in osmotic pressure values used by the literature. Um, I resolved the osmotic pressure issue by uh, correcting for a commonly made assumption uh, that was wrong at high salinities contacting OLI systems, and establishing a well-supported fit to experimental data, which you can see on the right. OLI is uh, widely used for the osmotic pressure calculations in the literature um, for high salinity brine treatment modeling. So the V11 update could affect a lot of researchers when it comes out. But until then, uh, the fit on the right from my research paper could be used in its place. OLI uses a lot more data for their model, but based on the preliminary data set they sent me, which I plotted, uh, they match very closely. And so additionally, we want to get to the point where OARO is used in hybrid processes along with pretreatment and possibly alongside thermal distillation. Um, but we first need to model the treatment of real brines, not just sodium chloride, which is what I did, to validate OARO as an option. An example of this could be dragging the FGD effluent stream from my mentor's other fellow, Valen, who actually presented on Monday, um, from OLI Studio into FlowSheet for separation. And so at this point, I'd like to thank the Mickey Leland Energy Fellowship and National Energy Technology Lab for this awesome opportunity this summer. And especially uh, Christina, Sandra, Natalie, and Patricia for their hard work organizing our experience in these weird times. And of course, my mentor, Dr. Nicholas Siefert, for guiding me along the way in this process and teaching me so much about a new subject and meeting with me all the time. Um, I really owe it all to you guys. 
And thanks to everyone for listening. Are there any questions?